Hello, this is Jeff Al Gilberts. Welcome to my gym and my home. I've been involved in network marketing now 40 years, so I'm going to be sharing some of what I've learned in my journey tonight on this live call. involved oh as I mentioned 40 years ago and I had to sell a junk truck to get started that was my story put $200 into my business and uh, been full-time the last 28 years so I'm gonna acknowledge some great people that are gonna be joining our call Ciro how are you good to see you in Salt Lake City how are you doing and uh, who else do we have Gary from Manila Philippines how you doing, Gary? It was nice seeing you last night. Micah, my son. Hey, what's up? What's up? Mark Ian, uh, good to see you. Uh, nice to see you on the call. Yeah, Micah, so I'm, I'm working on chest tonight. Working on chest. Then, the, then it was sauna. Flavio in the country of Ecuador. Nice to see you. <clears throat> Como esta? Yeah, uh, and Jennifer, how are you? Nice to see you. I believe Jennifer in Kansas, right? Luz, nice to see you in Utah, or I think you're in Utah now. And May, nice to see you. I believe Philippines, Monica in the Philippines. Good morning. Good morning in the Philippines. Nice to see you. <clears throat> and Mark Yen says, Colorado, man. That's where I'm at. Okay. Oh, wow, you did chess today too? Cool, that's cool. Yeah, you probably pressed a lot more than I did. <laughs> oh, I miss the good old days, okay. <laughs> Jennifer says yes, but it's cold. We're back to cold Kansas again. <laughs> Somebody mail Jennifer a heater, you know? <laughs> Put something in the mail, warm that girl up, man. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Kansas is cold. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's see who else is going to join before we get started. We're going to talk about power phrases. What are power phrases um, that would make people want to join with you in your business? And why, why are power phrases important? What are they? Why are they important? Um, so, and by the way, you can share this uh, live video if you want, and others can join and benefit from it. Because the, the more skill set your leaders have, the more money you're going to make. I think that makes sense, right? And uh, George in New York City, nice to see you, George. So tonight, uh, Heidi in Canada, nice to see you. Tonight, I want to talk about eight, eight power phrases that could make people want to join with you, that could have impact. So when it comes to prospecting, here, here's what I find. People talk too much. They talk too much. They talk people into looking at their opportunity and they talk people right out of it in the same conversation. They do that all the time. 
I want you to remember this. Remember this. The less you say, the more you make. The less you say, the more you make. You can write that in your comments too if you want. Um, I want you to get good at power phrases because power phrases impact people. It gets their attention to look at what you're doing. So other than talking too much, the second thing that most people do wrong is they get right into, into the presentation with a prospect without staging the interest, without staging the interest. Why should you stage the interest? Because if you want them to be teachable, if you want them to have, to, or to rather to find value in what you're going to share, you need to stage the interest before you give the presentation, either by video or if you bring them to a meeting. So that's why you want to stage it. Most people will make that mistake and go right into the presentation. So what you should say are phrases that create interest. They create curiosity. So that, that could be a statement, that could be a question. So let's go through some of them and talk about some of them. You know, you know some of you struggle with follow-up because you, know, you don't understand why people haven't gotten back to whatever you shared. You, know, you, you wait, you wonder, you wait, you wonder. The problem is, here's the thing, you know, if, if you keep calling people and stalking people and calling the same person every day, they're going to think that, hey, I'm the only prospect this person's got. I don't think I want to get involved in this. It's a little scary when, when people feel like they're being stalked, but a lot of people will do that. You know, they call them back, call them back, call them back every day. Uh, here's what I want to do is I'm going to go through the, the beginning first uh, power phrase that can turn that around for you when it comes to follow up. And so don't stalk them. What you can do is simply do this. This is your first power phrase, okay? Let some days go by, by the way. So if you've already called them 10 days in a row, don't call them tomorrow and do this, <laughs> okay? Let a week go by, leave them alone, okay? Or 10 days, okay? You need to disappear. They need to wonder what happened to him. He was stalking me for seven days, every day. Oh my gosh, maybe the old boy died. I hope not. <laughs> so give it a week, then get back, then call him back and just, you know, say something like this. And this is a power phrase or statement. You know, hey, I, hey, I'm sorry I haven't been able to get back with you. I've been so busy. We got so much growth going on right now. And, you know, it's just kept me busy. But you've been on my mind. I apologize for not getting back with you. I'm, I, you know, and, and when you set it up that way by apologizing because you're so busy, that is staging it. You're creating curiosity. You're creating interest. And then you can end that by saying, Hey, I've got some time tonight at 8.15 if you're available or tomorrow between 8 and 9, I've got some time. Let me know. I look forward to talking with you. So again, you're apologizing for being so busy, but even then you only got limited time for them to even get you on a phone. Now, see, that's the way you want to turn it around. You want them getting you on the phone instead of you always trying to get them on the phone. It's the psychology and the power phrase works. Let's talk about a second power phrase. So the second power phrase goes like this. Would you be open? Now, some of you have used that. It's, it's powerful. It works. Maybe a lot of your people on your team. Again, you can share this video now and your leaders can see it and you can get them trained. But um, would you be open? Uh, what I love about this phrase, it's not pushy. This phrase is not salesy. It focuses on the invitation, you know, not for them to make a decision to do anything other than to take a look at what you're doing. That's what I love about it. You know, the other thing is people pride themselves into having an open mind. You, know, you say something, you have, you have an open mind? Oh yeah, man, I got an open mind. Of course I do. Yeah, <laughs> sure. So 
it could go like this. Would you be open to other ways of making money if it didn't interfere with what you're already doing? So that's a power phrase. Would you be open to other ways of making money if it did not interfere with what you're doing? So that's my second power phrase. What I, I just love that one. It's so good. So how about this, uh, uh, number three? Number three is, uh, what did you like best? What did you like best? This is used as a follow-up. And what I love about this is it encourages a positive response. A positive response. It gets them to look for what was good about whatever you sent. If it, you know, if you, if you send them a video, then that's what they're going to do. They're going to talk to you about what they did like about the video. <clears throat> that's better than what we used to do in the old days when we used to ask the question used to be, what do you think? And that only encouraged a critical observation because it wasn't asking them to find anything positive. It, it was just, what do you think? And people generally default to criticism. So, you know, I love phrases like that. It helps you in following up with people on videos that you send. And well, here's the fourth one. I like this one. I'm in a hurry. You should always be in a hurry. Always. So, you know, that's the thing. You want to give the impression that your time is limited to people. You're in high demand, man. It's hard to get you. It's a privilege to be in your corner. It's a privilege to get five minutes of your time. I'm going to tell you, so many of you, under, you just sell yourself for nothing. You play to your value down because you're so available. So when you want to call a prospect and you, you reach that prospect, you could say, hey, John, hey, I'm in a hurry, man. I'm glad I caught you. Uh, just a minute, because I, I got an appointment. I've got to get on a call. But I wouldn't feel good about myself if I didn't reach out to you. I was thinking about you because I have something I want you to take a look at. It may or may not be for you. And if it's not, that's fine. But have you got some time to look at a video? If I send it now, do you got time to look at it now? Can I get back to you in 30 minutes? So again, the nice thing too about I'm in a hurry is that that person doesn't feel like, and they may be busy too. They're, they're glad to know you're not going to take a lot of their time. So again, it's, it's just professional. You're busy that, and it creates curiosity again. Why is he so busy? Why is he so busy? Something's going on. Maybe, maybe he's cut me out of something I need to be involved with. He's, he's, he's doing something that I should be doing. Here's a fifth phrase. You wouldn't know anybody who would want to I'll say that again on that phrase. You wouldn't know anybody who would want to. And what that is, that is a phrase where, where it goes like this. You wouldn't know anybody who would want to earn an extra $1,000 a month part-time, would you? You wouldn't know anybody who would want to earn $1,000 part-time, would you? That kind of question is a third-party question. And I love third-party questions. I used to use that a lot. I've been I used that decades ago. You know, when I when I was in a store, if I'm talking to people who are working there, I'd say, "Hey, you know, I'm getting a business going. You wouldn't know anybody who want to earn an extra thousand dollars a month part time, would you?" And every time they always said, "Yeah, me." Oh, you really? <laughs> I love it. And it's so easy to prospect. Say, hey, Rick, good to see you. It's so easy to prospect people that way. I love third party. I love third party questions because they it always works. It, I, every time I use that, it works. Works every time. Here's the sixth one, okay? The sixth one. This may or may not be a fit for you, but... Okay, so some of you use that phrase. Uh, if your downline doesn't use it, you need to teach them to use it. What I love about this is... When you're prospecting somebody, you're not putting them under pressure, okay? You're leaving them a way out and they're going to respect you for it. You know, this may or may not be for you. This may or may not be a fit for you, but I wouldn't feel good about myself if I didn't tell you what I was doing right now because it might profit you. 
So I love that phrase. Here's number seven. Number seven, if I, would you? If I, would you? So if I sent you a link, John, if I sent you a link to a 10 minute video, would you have time to look at it now? Now, if John says, well, not right now, I can't. Oh, okay, sure, you're busy. Okay, no problem. When, when do you think you have some free time? When are you available? Oh, five o'clock, okay. Okay, no problem. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'll text you at five o'clock, and if that's and if you got time, then I'll send you the video. But I, I just want you to allow me to talk to you after you've seen that video. So I'm gonna call you right after it, and it may or may not be a fit for you, and if it's not, it's totally fine. So is that okay? All right, I'll, I'll, I'll just message you at five. Good talking to you, John. See how that works? It's so simple, so easy. Or here's another, if I would you, how about this, if I would you, if I invited you to an exclusive business presentation, would you come? If I invited you to an exclusive business uh, presentation, would you come? Well, you know, even virtual events. I mean, I remember uh, back when we did venue meetings uh, where, where, you know, you only had so many seats in a room, right? I would say to somebody, hey, I've got three seats that were given to me by the presenter of a special business presentation that's going to happen. I don't know that you can, you can, if you need any extra money, but if you do, and if you can use some extra money, I've got three seats and I was thinking of you, would you want to come? And, and that's how we used to get some people to come out to hotel meetings, things like that. But you can do it for, with virtual events too, because virtual events can be limited. You can even say to your sponsor, give me a, a number like three and tell me that you're giving me three spots on the virtual event. So that way I'm not lying to the person when I call them and say, I only got three spots on this virtual event. And I was thinking of you, if you're open to some extra income, if you need some, just come take a look at it. If it's not for you, that's fine. Would you come? See, because you got to sell it as something special. They're special, but also what they're going to see is special. If you say, well, you know, just come to the meeting or just join the Zoom. It's not the same. It's just not the same. Okay, so here is the eighth phrase. What time works best for you? What I like about the what time works best for you is I can remember in the 1980s, man, I'll tell you, I, you know, this wasn't something I read and learned in a book. I mean, I just... It just made sense to me. But when I used to run ads back then in the 1980s, my goal was, number one goal was get the ad in the newspaper. Number two goal was get the phone to ring. Uh, number three goal was set the appointment. And that's what I would do. So when the person that I talked to uh, called me and they'll always ask you, well, what's this about? My response every time was, well, John, you know what? I wouldn't do justice to it if I explained it over the phone. In fact, I can't. You have to visually see it. So I tell you what, I have an opening at 10 or at one o'clock in the afternoon and even seven this evening. Which of the three would work for you? And you might say, well, one o'clock. I'd say, great. And as other people would call that, saying that, and call me, I would do the same thing. I have a 10, a 1, or a 7. Which would work for you? Now, the principle here for you, my friend, is in this power phrase, what time works best for you, is you need to always let the prospect know that your time is limited. And that's why you give them options like that. See, it specializes what you do. It makes you look like a professional you are. And so, and what happened was back then, you, you, you would probably be horrified <laughs> if you saw, because I would have sometimes 30 people show up <coughs> at a 10 o'clock presentation that I did in front of a whole group of strangers. And I do the same thing at one and I would do the same thing at seven when I had an office. I'm serious. I did that in Huntsville, Alabama back in the 1988. You're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you did that. You know, there's, you know, you can do these things virtually too. 
You can do these things virtually. So those are the eight, those are the eight uh, <laughs> phrases. Do I have an extra seat to go pro? <laughs> oh, okay. If you keep following my lives, uh, you're gonna, you've already, you, you'll go pro. I mean, <laughs> believe me, anything you hear there, you're gonna hear here. You're gonna hear on these lives. Only difference is you gotta pay money to go to that, okay? <laughs> That's the truth. Hey, I wanna let you know something now uh, for those of you that have kept up now. So we're done with that training, okay? I hope you enjoyed it. If you got value from it, you can, you can share it. Um, and then you'll make your downline wiser. And they'll start using the eight power phrases that will make people want to join them in their business and your income will increase. <clears throat> um, so, and George is also reminding that if you haven't got my book, Reaching the Peak, it's on Amazon in English and in Spanish. I wanna give you an update on the Neora um, uh, lawsuit against the FTC. Why is this significant? It's extremely significant. Yeah, you might remember the company Nerium, uh, Jeff Olson, his company. Um, um, anyway, um, just to give you, jar your memory, one year ago, one year ago, <clears throat> the FTC was emboldened, especially after the Advocare, when they shut down the Advocare, that was a very unique situation. Very unique situation with Advocare because the owner who started Advocare died years ago, many years ago. The children were not interested in the company and in, in being involved in the company. And I don't know why, it was doing $400 million. And uh, because some of the top leaders of that company started doing stupid things on social media, like showing their checks off, <clears throat> Well, the FTC just went and gave Avocare an, an ultimatum. Shut down your network marketing. You can sell products. That's it. So Avocare had a choice. Do I, uh, do I go into a lawsuit with the FTC and spend hundreds of millions of dollars defending myself uh, you know, through these years before it goes to trial? It usually takes two to three years before it goes to trial, and they've spent hundreds of millions of dollars. And will our distributors stay with us? Well, you know, they, again, they, that man's children didn't have interest in the company. So they just said to the FTC, okay, we're gonna shut down. And that was it, all the distributors were cut out. All of them lost their income. So the FTC thought, well, that's, that was an easy kill. Then they went after Nerium, Jeff Olson's company. It's called Neora now. <clears throat> but um, anyway, and what they did was they sent him a letter said, we want you to uh, do away with your network marketing model. You can sell products. Really? And Jeff Olson did not answer them. He did not answer them. He went and got a very strong law firm to represent Neora. And he was the first, uh, Neora was the first network marketing company to file a lawsuit against the FTC. And of course, they went bonkers when, when they did, and they immediately countersued right away. And if you read the lawsuit, it would scare you to death because uh, it tells you exactly what the FTC thinks about network marketing. That if you make, if you, if you get a, if you make an income off a downline, that's a pyramid scheme. That's how ridiculous they've become. They're, they're, and, and keep in mind, <clears throat> Interesting enough, this was last year, last October, uh, President Trump sent all the federal agencies, including the FTC, a letter saying you cannot create laws by yourself. All laws are created through Congress. You cannot put a hardship on the American people. So do not do that. And so Jeff Olson quoted that in his lawsuit against the FTC. That's exactly what you are doing. Because what's been perfectly acceptable for decades is no longer acceptable, according to you. But those laws do not exist. So that's the thing. So now what's, uh, what's happening is that, that lawsuit, when it goes to court, we absolutely want New York to have a total victory. And, and some network marketing companies are, are supporting um, and giving money 
uh, to support Neora in its legal battle. I thought this was interesting news. I always look for updates because, uh, um, you know, you know, we want to see them win. That's for sure. <clears throat> because if they don't win, it sets a precedent for all network marketing companies, which is a bad thing. Okay. Uh, but anyway, so here's, here was, uh, this, I, I just saw this news, one of the top leaders in New York, she's a friend of mine, <clears throat> uh, she sent me this and this was an announcement that the former FTC chairman, um, uh, Marine, uh, Allison just joined Neora's legal team. So this was the FTC chairman just joined Neora's legal team. And now she is going to assist in defending uh, Neora in court against the very people she used to work with. So I think that's interesting. Very, very, very interesting. Uh, it said about this woman that uh, Marine, it says about her, Marine is a strong addition to our robust legal team. Um, with her FTC background and our strong case, we believe that we can defeat the FTC in its attempt to enact a new retroactive inter, <coughs> inter <laughs> interpretation interpretation of how direct sales companies are to are to operate. See more and more. Here's what we're we're seeing too, and I've even mentioned this to the president and CEO of our company that I think it's best that network marketing companies really distance themselves from the DSA from the Direct Sales Association simply because very few distributors, we call them distributors, that's an old, old network marketing term. How many of you actually distribute out there in the United States? Now, if you're in the Philippines, sure, direct sales is very important, I understand that. If you're in India, if you're in South America, I get that. But you're gonna find that in the United States and in Europe, we don't, go out and sell products. We don't. We simply share a link and let somebody buy the product on our page. That's how we do it. So, and then, and then we sponsor either preferred customers or we sponsor people in the business. But what we're doing is we're building a network of consumers. We're not building a network of salespeople. So it's not about sales, it's about consuming. So we're the bridge between that person and the company who actually does the sale or ships that product out to that person. We get a commission for having brought that person to the table. And that, that's how that works. But what we're doing is we're building a network of consumers. That's what network marketing is. We're not involved in direct sales. Now, if you're, you wanna go out and sell products and you wanna do direct sales, go for it, man, go for it. Uh, you're never going to get independently wealthy or create residual income because you're trading time for money. Nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that if that's what you want to do. It's not what I want to do. Okay. And most people that get involved in network marketing, that's just what they want to do. They want to create residual income. So it, 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 unless you're out there selling products, you're not in direct sales. You're involved in network marketing if you're sharing links inviting people to buy your products from your page or join with you in the business. So that, that, uh, that was very encouraging to be able to read that. I was very pumped when I, when I read that because I, I want to stay on top of that court battle. It, it won't happen next year. It'll probably be the following year. So that's okay. But, uh, but in the meantime, pushback is very good. It's very good. And that's what they, that's what they need because they, 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 when they, when they, when Abacare just immediately shut their doors, they thought, well, that's an easy kill. And they thought every company was gonna be like that. It's not, it's not. And then the other thing too is <coughs> their, their distributor to customer ratio is very high. It's very high. It's like in the 70s, 70%, something like that. 72%, I think. It's very high. So they were doing everything right, it's just that the FTC didn't like them because Jeff likes to talk about personal development. They like to, they like to, uh, you know, show people the, the kind of future they can have. And uh, we see that government is moving more and more toward control. It's more about control. They want you to need them. 
They want you to be dependent on their health care. They want you to be dependent on the food that you're going to eat. They want you to be dependent, you know, so that's it. And of course, we'll probably see more of this coming along uh, in the future here, especially if they're pushing a socialist agenda, because that's what it's all about. It's all about control. And they don't want people in, independent. So the thing about it is, just understand that you, you have rights and stick by your rights and always uh, stand up for your rights. That's your, that's, your, that's, your, that's your right as a citizen. You can do that and should do that. And, but I, but I'm, I was glad to get this news and I thought I wanted to share it. Let you see what you think about it. I think it's good and I think the future is very bright for network marketing. So the thing is, keep in mind now, this we got what, a week left in this month and it's over, it's gone. Then you only got one more month and the years, it's gone. So the speed that you establish right now and in, in how you end this month is gonna determine how your January begins. Don't be one of those that wait, <laughs> you fall asleep and your speed gets real slow and you know, the holidays and all that. Nothing wrong with you getting together with your family and all that, that's fine. You, you do all that, but don't take a permanent holiday. That's a bad mistake, okay? And hit it hard, run hard, get your speed going because I find a lot of people, you're trying to wake them up in January and they usually don't wake up until the very end of January. Usually it's more like February they start waking up. You know, here's the thing. We can do that, but the people that don't do that, the people that hustle, are the ones that are going to reap the greatest rewards. So, I hope that's you. Thanks for getting on this call. If you got value, you can share it, and then your leaders can learn how to use those eight phrases. And that great news about how uh, companies are fighting for their freedoms but they are fighting for us. In this case, Neora is fighting for us. And I appreciate them, I really do. I, I actually knew Jeff Olson back in the 80s because he actually wanted to use my office in Huntsville, Alabama to do a meeting once. And I said, sure, man. <laughs> we, were both, we were both distributors in the same company back then. But anyway, um, yeah. yeah, he's got a book on Amazon. It's called The Slight Edge. If you've never read it, it's worth the read. It's called The Slight Edge. Anyway, everyone have a great evening and look forward to having you on my next call later this week. I'll put out some value tomorrow and then I'll see you back on Wednesday, okay? Everyone have a great night. Thank you. Thank you, Carolyn. Bye-bye.